This video is sponsored by Altium. In the previous videos, we learned about three different data annotation tools, VGG Image Annotator, Image Lab, and Make Sense. All of the three web-based tools are really simple and free to use. I've used Image Lab to annotate 100 images and process their JSON file to get the binary mask. The reason for using Image Lab is because of its simple UI, it's easy to use, and you can use it as an offline tool. You can simply download the source code for this Image Lab tool, install it, and use it without needing the internet. Now, let's have a look at the complete human face segmentation dataset. Here we have two folders, images and mask, and each folder contains 100 items inside it. Now, let's take a look at the 100 images. Here we have 100 images. Let's take a look at a few of them. The mask folder contains the binary mask for those 100 images. We will use this dataset to train our unit architecture, which we have implemented in Module 2. This video is sponsored by Altium, the industry standard and most professional PCB design software on the market. I've used Altium for designing printed circuit boards to build my own custom Arduinos and high-speed on-edge computer vision projects. When I tested other PCB CAD softwares out there, I found that nothing came close to the flexibility ease of use and power of Altium Designer. I mean, if you ever worked on PCB design for computer vision applications, you know that transmitting video signals is a very delicate task with many high-speed signals that you have to consider in terms of electromagnetic noise and crosstalk. Altium helps you to easily manage and route high-speed signals with length tuning to ensure that you receive clear image quality on the other end. What's really great is that we have partnered up with Altium to bring you an exclusive discount for our Augmented Startups community. Sign up with the link down below to get 30% off monthly of the perpetual license of Altium Designer. You can also try out Altium Designer for free for the first 15 days. Just click the link down below to get started. But we are going to visualize the human face segmentation dataset as shown here. Here we have a pic where we join the input image, and then it is followed by the ground truth. And ground truth is the binary mask that you have annotated using the data annotation tool. After that, we extracted the foreground class. And finally, we have the background class. In this way, we can easily see all the things at once. Here we can easily see any mistake or any fault in the data set. Now let's write some Python code. First of all, we are going to import some libraries here. First, we are going to import the operating system library. Next, we will import our famous NumPy, which is used to perform mathematical operations on arrays. Next, we have CB2, which we will use to read and write images. And finally, we have our TQDM library. TQDM is basically a progress bar. Now, our first task would be to load all our images. Before that, let's have a look at the dataset. Inside the images folder, we have all our images each with a name. If you go into the mask folder, we can see masks also have the same names. So both the images and the masks have the same name. We are going to extract all the names from the images folder. Let's do that. We are going to type image names. Here we will use our opening system function called listdir. And inside it, we need to give a path. Our path is dataset slash images. Just remember the slash can be different for Windows users. Let's add a cell here. And here we are going to print names. We can see we have all the names. If we want, we can even sort them in any order. We can type sorted. Now they would be all sorted in a sequence. And see, first we have 1, 10, 101. They are sorted now. Now we are going to loop over this list. We have the name, and now we are going to get inside each directory and extract the image and the mask, and then we will concatenate them. Let's loop over them. Here we're going to type for name in tqdm and the variable's name. Here our first task would be the image path and the mask path. Image path equal to f string, and the next would be name. This is the image path. Next would be the mask path. Again, an F string, so we're going to type dataset slash masks slash name. So we have the image and the mask path. Let's print them. We can see all the images and the mask paths. Now, let's read both the image and the mask as an RGB image. 
the image we can say is X. We're going to use our OpenCV library. Here we're going to type the image path, then we're going to type cv2.imread underscore color. With this line, we are going to read this image as RGB. For the mask, we are going to type cb2.imread mask path. Now we have read both the image and the mask. Now let's print the dimension or shape. We can see their height, width, and the number of channels. So both images and masks have the same shape in all cases. Now, first of all, let's try to concatenate both these images and masks. When you want to concatenate, ensure they are precisely the same shape. First of all, their number of channels should be identical. Let's type cat img. And now we're going to use a numpy function called concatenate. And inside it, we'll give a list of arrays, x and y. And here we need to type axes on which axis we want to concatenate images. So let's type one. Now we need to save the images. To save those images, we need a path. Let's create a path. We're going to have a blank folder here. We're going to type cat img. Now we are going to type cat img slash name. After that, we are going to type cat img. Let's execute it. We can see the TQDM showing the progress bar and it's taken just two seconds to complete this process. Let's go inside cat img. We can see we have an image and its respective mask at once. Now you can see how easily you can see the image and its respective mask. Now let's put a line between the image and the mask so we can easily separate them. We're going to type line. So if we see, the line should be exactly the same height and its width can be changed. We're going to type np.ones. And here we're going to type x.shape0. The width can be 10 and the number of channels should remain the same. Now we're going to multiply it by 225. This line is basically a white line. It contains all the pixels of this dimension. So between x and y, we are going to insert a line. Now we're going to execute it again. We can see this example here. We have an image, a white line, and a mask. We can even concatenate these images on top of each other if we want. Instead of sideways, you can concatenate on top of each other. For that, first of all, we are going to remove this line part, and instead of axis one, we are going to type zero. Let's execute it. We can see now images and masks are on top of each other. You can insert a line between them as well. But this time, its height can change, but its width should remain fixed. We're going to type line np0. Here we can type 10. And instead of 10 here, we're going to type x.shape1. This way, we will insert a line between x and y. Let's go back to our images. We can see the line between the image and the mask. But I believe sideways is much better. Let's again go back to our original configuration. Now we are fine. So now what do we need? We need a foreground image like this. With further images, we're going to type F image. We're going to type X, which is the input image, and multiply it with the mask. And the mask is in Y. And we're going to type Y divided by 255. So when we divide the mask by 255, it normalizes. Its pixel value becomes zero and one. We have a foreground image and we're going to type after y line f image. Here we can see the input image, ground truth, and the foreground class. So this is a much better way to see what part we have included in our annotation process. Now let's include the background image. So we're going to type BIMG, the input image. And this time we are going to type one minus y divided by 255. This time we're going to reverse the process and we're going to type line BIMG, which is the background image. Let's execute it and go back into our folder. This time we can see we have all four images. The first input image, it's ground truth. The third image is the foreground class and the fourth is the background class. The background class would help you see which region you have not included. Maybe you have neglected some regions by chance. So this way, it is easy for us to see everything in a single image.
Now you would ask, why are we doing this? Now we are going to move to the next slide. In this slide, we are going to learn about data management. So our first task would be to clean the data set. We all cleaned the images, then we have collected high quality images, and then we have annotated them. And finally, we have our data set. But still, there's going to be some chance that there may be some mistake or issue with the data set. So before releasing the data or using it for training, we will check it again for the last time. To do that, we have done this visualization. Here within these images, you can easily see which images are faulty and which are fine. This way you can check an image and remove it if you don't want it. Finally, when you are done with your data set, it's the last part. You can store that data set somewhere. Firstly, you can store it in your system, but you can also share it with other people or store it online. The first option would be Google Drive. You can store it on Google Drive and share the link with your friends. And another better option would be to upload it on Kaggle. There, other people can also use it, write the code on it, and they can also give you some votes. With votes, you can see the quality of your data set, how much people are using it. So that is it about the data set and the annotation process. In the next module, we will use this human face segmentation data set and train the unit architecture.